Greetings and welcome to this episode of Leadership Matters, a video series highlighting the stories and experiences of global leaders and providing leadership advice. The series is hosted by Avinash Ananda, a recognized leadership advisor, happiness strategist and a motivational keynote speaker. Over the course of more than 30 years, Avinash has personally mentored more than a thousand leaders and trainers and trained more than one million individuals from all walks of life in 30 countries. Our special guest for today's episode is Eleni Kitra, founder and CEO at People First. With three decades of experience, Eleni has served as the regional head of automotive and mobility at Facebook, where she led the strategic business development for mobility and automotive as a service for the MENA region for all of Facebook's family of apps, including Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, and Messenger. Eleni is an international author. She has just launched her first book, that she co-authored, titled Made with Tough Love, a compilation of real-life business stories. Welcome to yet another episode of Leadership Matters. Leadership does matter, but the leaders matter more. And we have one more exciting leader today, all the way from Dubai. I thought she was in Dubai, but then I just found out she's in Greece. I'm in Mumbai. She's from Dubai. She lives in Greece. She's got a Greece right now. So Eleni Kitra, you heard a, you heard her profile a little bit before this, uh, but we're going to talk more about uh, everything. <laughs> Eleni, <laughs> Eleni, how uh, happy Easter! You're in Greece for Easter. Yeah, well, I'm Greece. I'm in Greece uh, for Easter, which is our Orthodox Easter. Yes, that's right. That's weekend. right. I, I have yeah. one of one of my one of my closest friends is uh, is a Greek, and uh, oh. I have a Greek nice. name also. They call me Thanasis. Huh? So the, my Greek name is Nasho. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. I'm okay. You, I, I I tell people I said then Katalavena Elenika, you know. So I learned this. <laughs> <laughs> I learned one sentence in every language which says I don't know how to speak that language, you know, and it works beautifully. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Okay, okay, I will keep it in mind as we talk. I will keep it in mind. <laughs> Lovely. So, Tika Nis, how are you? I'm good. Thank you for asking, and I hope you're doing well. Yeah, all is good. All is good. It's great to be back very, home, very good. even for a short time. Eleni, the Greek culture and the Indian culture has a lot in common, if we actually study it and go a little deeper. Yeah. Uh, for example, in India, they say, you know, the role of a parent is to give the child roots and then to give mm -hmm. the child wings. Huh? Yeah. Uh, probably in the, uh, in, in, in the West, the wings are given early huh? uh, without adequate roots. And probably in the East, there's too much roots given where they don't give them the wings enough to fly. You, know? <laughs> uh, you, you straddle both the worlds. You're an entrepreneur. You've been executive. You've headed uh, uh, major, major assignments with Meta and other companies. On the other hand, you also a mom. Your kids are not with you right now. No, they're um, actually they're studying abroad in different countries in, uh, in Europe. Yeah. You have two kids. Uh, a boy, 22 years old, and a girl, 20 years old. Yeah. Ah, Gen Z. Gen Z completely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have Gen Z in my face like that all the time. Yeah. <laughs> so what is, the, what is the commonality between being a mom and being a leader? Does this apply about roots and wings, the values and the freedom? Or what, what, is, what, what is your understanding of that and your experience? Okay. Um, so I, I can tell you that trying to be a leader, because we are always trying to be, you know, uh, sure. doing and achieving that. I always think myself as a parent because when I go into the room and talk to my kids, what I try to make them do is understand me, align with me, do the stuff we are discussing, and then when I leave the room, they still love me. So wow, wow, wow. We, 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 we're going to get this. Understand yeah. you. Align with you, do the stuff you're asking them to do, and when you leave the room, they love you. This is powerful four elements of leadership. I'm telling you, write this down, guys. Yeah, go ahead, please. Sorry, Eleni. <laughs> no, no, no. But you know, 
trying to be a leader and especially when you are in places where it's not your hometown where you know everyone you know you mm-hmm. were raised together and you understand the common language when you are out of your hometown and you're with different people from different cultures and origins you need to be able to understand them and then them understand you and try to be on the same page in a way that makes sense for both of us mm-hmm. and have as possible so in order to do that you need to simplify things and you need to be able to see what you're proposing and offering through their own eyes so they can actually go ahead and do that which is not easy it's not sure. easy for a number sure. of reasons and risks and you know challenges we're facing um throughout the, our days so this is applicable uh whether it's generation to generation or whether it is culture to culture huh? or whether it is person to person is that correct i think it's um it's you know if you if you try to simplify things you're doing and you break this down to the roots no matter who you talk to even in bigger teams or you are in a in a room with a thousand people or one on one you manage to find the areas where you feel you are connecting And the mm-hmm. moment you feel you're connecting, then things can be easier, not easy completely, but easier to, to see that you have more things to solve together than having to fight. Unless it's a matter of values or other things or ethical sure. things, the rest <laughs> can be manageable and addressable. This is fantastic formula for alignment through conflict. And then everything <laughs> becomes easy. You know, easy is E-A-S-Y. Everyone always yeah. says yes. Ah. <laughs> Unfortunately, like they don't, they don't always that. say yes, but you know, we do our best. <laughs> That's great. That's fantastic. So, uh, Eleni, uh, uh, you've, you've written a book, you've co-authored a book, and the title of the book is Tough Love. But from what I understand, it's been co-authored by nine different people, and your, yeah. your topic is very exciting, very interesting. It's on the metaverse. So yeah, we nine people from different industries, uh, very senior leaders actually in the region here. We um, wrote a book together and we covered different chapters and different categories like business and marketing and communication. And I wrote about metaverse in a way to make metaverse more simple uh-huh. and um, identify how actually what is coming to our side, okay, because technology, AI, and everything about virtual reality and the integration needs to find the way to be applicable in sure. the different aspects, either of business, of life, or communications. And this was what I tried to do. And uh, the title of my chapter is Meet Me in the Metaverse. Wow, that's lovely. That's lovely. So uh, uh, artificial intelligence and uh, our human intelligence, huh? Mm-hmm. uh where do they meet uh in the metaverse or where well <laughs> that's a very <laughs> interesting question by the way it cannot be answered easily but the thing is that technology brings opportunities and capabilities that we we as humans we need to you know take advantage and leverage them um i always believe that a human brain is more is smarter than a machine Mm-hmm. And that's why it's on us how to manage everything that's coming from technology to work for our benefit, to work mm-hmm. for our interest. We're going to face challenging situations because the way that technology learns from its, you know, from its own process, it's, uh, it goes faster than how we can actually um, interact. Not how we can think and be smarter, how fast we interact. Because sometimes we don't see the impact on our everyday lives. Brilliant. So that's why we need frameworks. We need, you know, um, um, having organizations and governments being aware of what technology is bringing, but this mm-hmm. doesn't mean it should stop um, evolution. Brilliant. So what I got from what you said is speed of processing is much faster with the machines, but yeah. the quality of processing or maybe the intellect is more with the humans. Is that correct? You put it so nicely. Uh, I will write I'm it down. I'm it from you. So I can just say <laughs> that. <laughs> and then he told me, simplify, simplify, simplify. Henry David Thoreau said the same thing. So I'm listening to you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Lovely. So yeah. you also said that 
connectivity has can be increased with technology, but connectedness remains with human beings. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, uh, Eleni? Uh, what are your uh, values? Uh, what are your beliefs? As, as an individual, throughout the years, uh, what have you developed as very strong core beliefs that are helping you in your life, both personal and uh -huh. professional? So I'll tell you two things that uh, I think it's the backbone of who I am and who I was and what I'm going to be anyway. Um, the first one is I always believe in people because you can get the best out of them. If That's the name of your organization. Them. Sorry for yeah, jumping people first. Yes. People first. first. Yeah. And I believe that because I've seen myself, my cluster circle, family, how many friends I have made, and I see the impact in my life when I'm close to people. So mm -hmm. people for me are number one. The second one, which is something I think I developed as I was growing up, okay? And depending on what kind of different phase in my life I had, mm -hmm. I don't believe in being a victim, no matter how hard things are coming your way. So yes, there are biases and uh, inequalities and insecurities and high, many risks, but I always believe in growth mindset mm -hmm. and I wouldn't say the warrior mindset, but the fighter mindset and not to be a victim, no matter what situation is coming my way. So, yeah. and this is where I, I get my strength and my, you know, um, my inspiration to move faster and forward. That, amazing. Uh, have you, have you uh, in your own life gone from victim to survivor to conqueror or warrior or fighter um i i have moved from being very weak uh and being in you know in a very uncomfortable situation so i wouldn't say victim but a very sure, uncomfortable sure, situation sure, sure. to say um i don't care i'm gonna make it work have my ups and downs and at the end i made things work for me in a way that i really enjoyed that this doesn't mean I say again that I didn't have moments of failure, of you know, of sadness, of you know, trying to think what I didn't do properly and what I didn't do well. But I never ever think that I was a victim and what happened to me, it was not my responsibility. Because there's always responsibility in what we do and what we get back. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so beautiful because you know, the many people uh, uh come to me and they they talk about responsibility and they think of responsibility sometimes as blame. Listen, responsibility is not blame. Responsibility is the decision to take ownership to make things yeah. better. I, I see something very interesting, you, Eleni. Eleni. Uh, I, see, I see two paradoxes. I see uh, strength and sensitivity. Mm -hmm. And I see uh, structure and simplicity. Uh, okay. which is very interesting. It's very rare to find that in one human being. You're also an award winner. You won so many awards. And recently you got an award for uh, the top 100 women leaders. Is that is that true recently? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, yeah. Okay, so when it came to me, I was like, really? <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes when you come from a smaller country and, you know, uh, you feel like, oh, who is paying attention to me? And it was very nice. Not only for the for the award, I was very proud to be receiving that, but because I had to to write down my nomination, you know, um, oh. intro and had to be like I think three hundred words. I was like, okay, so what do I put here after thirty years in corporate life and uh, you know in being an entrepreneur? And then being a parent and who am I? So that was really a very interesting exercise for me. It was a very you're, interesting you're, exercise. You're a coach. You're a leadership coach yourself. You run a coaching and training organization in Dubai. But you were also a uh, uh, an, uh, an employee of sorts at a very lead, uh, senior level. But you've been running projects within the organization. What's the yeah. difference between working for an organization and being on your own? Okay. If I make... Uh, fun of it and as yeah, i was yeah, saying to yeah. my husband when you work when you work for your a corporation you get paid for the effort when you're an entrepreneur you get paid for the outcome 
And if yeah. the client pays you back, no, no. Um, <laughs> I think it's important. I think it's important to have worked in both worlds because yeah. uh, working for a big organization gives you so much. And I really have gained so much when it comes to knowledge, structure, you know, uh, prioritization, accountability. And of course, you know, you get paid for that and you feel that you are really creating something and you are compensated. However, going into the entrepreneur world, which I love it, um, you identify new capabilities to yourself that you will never think of because you you have to operate out of the box and you find areas you will never think before. So you bring the structure you were taught in the new way of operating yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you enhance this you layer on your your hunger to do more in mm. a way that you couldn't do before and actually i think whoever does this journey it's for the benefit of both you know the business and the people so i just love it right now beautiful beautifully put so nice huh? uh, uh, woman huh? women mm-hmm. what what do you think about women I love women. I have a daughter. I have a mom. <laughs> I'm a woman. Yeah, I love women too. <laughs> no, uh, I, I was. Uh, it was more in jest. But yeah, I know. You you won you won an award for being a woman leader. Uh, is yeah. there a difference between woman leader and man leader? Uh, and okay. is it is uh, it is this is this uh, is this challenging? Uh, let's say a woman leader uh, from Greece in Dubai. Uh, mm. This okay. just a few questions on that. So first of all, I need to say that men and women, um, they can be equally very talented people and can sure. contribute to any kind of organization, you know, family or any kind of ecosystem and circle, social circle, in the way they can, not because of the gender, but because of the personality and their capabilities. So I start from that. Meritocracy. The thing, yes. The second thing is that, of course, we have some different capabilities because gender also enhances the way we uh, operate, not only from a physical aspect, but also from the kind of role we have undertaken Mm -hmm. until now. So we have developed skills probably because of the hobby to be, you know, um, doing uh, a specific role in society. An An example of that? I'll tell you something. Being a mother, I, uh, I'm always the one who thinks family more than my husband in areas where he cannot think of, which doesn't mean we don't love the, our family yeah. in the same way, is that the way I take action on that is different than my husband, faster yeah. and more efficiently sometimes because I know how to do with these things, okay? Is it, is it also and more it, caring? Is it also more caring or more holistic? Mm. Faster, you said. More efficient, you said. I'm asking about the caring part. Does that yeah. come in more? I don't want to say yes or no because it's about the person as well. But don't forget that when you give birth, yeah. this is an added element that changes the way that Absolutely. you see family. Okay, You it's become a giver. Like a mom or a dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen my mother is the strongest leader I know. Huh? Huh? So... I understand that completely. That's brilliant. And I'm, Let's go. Yeah, please. I'm more, I'm more strict than my husband to my kids. So I care tough for them. Love, tough love. Tough love. Tough love. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. You know, but at you know the end, said, um, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. Okay. I just want to, to finish what you asked me before. I don't yeah. believe that we need to think about men and women leaders. We need to think about leaders uh, overall and just think the gender element as some that could actually add more value, but not as a differentiator. Not at all. Brilliant. I love it. Fun question. Uh, which animal do you think you are most like? Not in terms of uh, in terms of qualities, maybe, you know? Huh? Okay. Uh, I think I'm a combination of a golden retriever and the German shepherd. So Why? I can be... The playful one who wants to enjoy uh-huh. life and then the one who, you know, keeps everything in place and is very specific, very structured and protects the business, the family uh, or everyone who's close to me. That's so amazing. See, I told you, <laughs> you, saw, you saw what we were doing right from the beginning, the roots, the wings. 
the sincerity, the the structure, no, the the, the paradoxes uh, throughout. Eleni, this is fantastic. Eleni, you know what I got from whatever you said right now. If I was to take mm -hmm. all of this together and put it together to describe you, and I'm doing this right now, you know, because in the field that I work in with advising and working with leaders and coaching them, uh, we we also uh, it's called the the science that we use is called meta mind alignment. Huh? So it's all about alignment. So what I got by connecting the dots and aligning everything about you, Eleni, E-L-E-N-I. You want to write it down? I got this for you. Yeah. <laughs> I will do. I, I, I love yeah. that. <laughs> P is for entrepreneur. Yeah. Sure. Okay. L is for leader. E is for energizer. N is for nurturer. Nurturer. No, and yes. uh, I is for uh, integrator. I don't know how you put this, but I'm the a person who puts I everything together, I... puts everything together in a simple way with integrity. You remember you said, guys. You remember Ellen? You said this. You can align on everything else with people. Don't compromise your values. <laughs> Don't compromise who you are. That's where the integrator or integrity comes in. You like this? You've been entrepreneur, you've been leader, you're energizing everybody wherever you go. You are a nurturer, whether it's a mother as a as a as a parent or as a leader, and you're an integrator of everything, whether it is the metaverse, the universe, or the multiverse. This is fantastic. <laughs> Avinash, I love that. I never thought of this. Thank you so much. This will be my, <laughs> my new motto. <laughs> this is your Easter gift, Eleni. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Thank you very much for that. Thank you very Lovely, lovely talking with you and look forward to continuing the conversation at some other time. Thank you. Same here. Thank you so bye much. Abhi. Thank you. Bye-bye.